Okay, so let's go ahead and start talking about star systems and galaxies. I hope that music pumped you up just a little bit and got you in the mood for that. Uh, the difference between planets and stars. Now this is important. Of course Earth is a planet and it seems huge compared to the Sun, but that's only because we're on Earth and the Sun is so far away. Uh, of course, compared to the whole solar system, it is all small. And of course, then compared to our galaxy, the Milky Way, uh, it is even smaller. So we have to think about all of these things in comparison to each other. What is a star, you ask? Uh, a star is just a giant ball of gas. It is mostly hydrogen and helium. And what happens and where all of that energy comes from is the nuclear fusion reactions that are taking place on the star, or in this case, in our sun. Uh, nuclear fusion is just hydrogen atoms that are being forced to bond together and they are creating helium. And again, that gives off a tremendous amount of energy. We are going to talk more about stars in lesson five. We're gonna talk about their life cycles. So what is the difference between a star and a planet? Um, of course, planet is just an object that orbits a star. Um, now, a couple key things with planets. They are large enough uh, to become rounded by their own gravity. So they have enough mass that that gravity can take over and create that circular shape. Also, another key thing is that planets have a cleared area to orbit. Um, when we start talking about some of the smaller bodies in the solar system, this is going to be a key distinction between what um, a planet is versus other objects that are there. Okay, uh, stars, of course, are made up of mostly uh, gas, of course, the hydrogen and the helium, as opposed to solids and liquids. Um, stars are also much larger um, than planets, and because of those nuclear fusion reactions, they are also a lot hotter. Okay, so a solar system. A solar system is just a, uh, has certain components. It has a star and it has other planets and other objects that revolve around that star. Um, they are also called planetary systems. You can see our lonely little Pluto is in there. Um, we, he is no longer considered a planet, uh, but I left him there just for some goodwill. Um, our solar system only has one star, which of course is our sun. Uh, this is not common. Uh, stars are actually usually members of groups of two or more stars that are called star systems. So there usually isn't just a single star by itself. Star systems that have two stars are called double stars. Uh, they are also called binary stars. And you can see several examples there of some other stars um, in our universe. Um, many stars belonging to a group is called a star cluster. So again, it's pretty rare for a star like ours, the sun, to sort of be on its own. But thank goodness it is, otherwise it would be a little bit toastier here on Earth. A galaxy is just a huge group of single stars, star systems, star clusters, dust, gas, all of it. But one of the key things is that it is all bound together by gravity. Now, when we are talking about galaxies, as you saw in uh, the video on the different galaxies, um, they, there are three major types. There are spiral, elliptical, and irregular. Spiral galaxies have that huge bulge in the middle and arms that spiral out so it looks like a pinwheel, something that you might get at a fair. And in those arms, there's gas and dust and other younger stars. Um, we believe that the Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. And then, of course, Earth um, and our solar system is just going to be in one of those arms coming out from the center. There are barred spiral galaxies. And those have that bar-shaped area of stars and gas that pass right through the center. And you can see that in the picture on the screen that bar or that line going right through that center bulge. Elliptical galaxies look like round flattened balls. 
Uh, they have billions and billions of stars, uh, but they don't have as much gas and dust between them. Uh, typically in elliptical galaxies, the stars are no longer forming, and so usually they contain much older stars. Galaxies that don't have a regular shape, uh, like the elliptical or like the spiral, are called irregular galaxies because they have irregular shapes. Uh, they are typically smaller than the other types of galaxies, and they are full of very bright and young stars, lots of dust, lots of gas, and lots of new formations going on. Okay, um, now, the last major type of galaxy is called a quasar. Uh, quasi means as if. Um, in the 60s, distant bright objects were able to be seen uh, and were discovered, and they looked like stars. Um, and so they were called quasi-stellar objects, um, or quasars. They are active young galaxies. They have enormous black holes at their centers. And so, of course, the amount of gravity effect there is huge. Okay, that ends uh, lesson two on stars and galaxies. Make sure you have your notes in Cornell style. Let's get some good questions and a good summary going. And we will move on in class to some activities on galaxies.